A part of the consultation day is when all of the people that are there for a consultation come into this one room in Dr. Moy's office. At this point, he proceeds to tell us about the operation, what to expect, how it's going to work. And he did such a thorough explanation. What was interesting to me, too, at that point is at the end, he asked if anyone had any questions. And nobody did, not even myself. But one thing I did realize at that very moment, wow, <laughs> I'm really going forward with this. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. I'm Dr. Moy. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be um, taking you through a presentation here, and then after that, I'll get to talk to each of you one-on-one -on -one after that. Okay? What we're going to do today is I'm going to first of all tell you what a bunion is, why you have it, what's rather unique about the procedure that I've developed to correct this condition, and then I'll take you through about a six-week recovery process in which patients typically go through. And then after that, I will tell you how to go about scheduling surgery and tell you what the day of surgery is all about in terms of where do you go, how long you're there, the type of anesthesia that you'll receive, and all of that. Now, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. That's why we're all here. And we can each share and benefit from the questions and answers that we may have. By the way, I may defer the answer, though, to your question because I have it prepared in the next slide or so. Okay? Let me get this computer set up here. Well, first of all, what is a bunion? Um, a bunion is an outgrowth of bone there on the side of your foot. Now, you were not born with this bunion, but you did inherit a foot structure that led you to develop this bunion over a long period of time as a result of simply just standing or walking on your foot. There's somebody in your family, whether it's your mom, your dad, or one of your four grandparents that has a foot that's very similar to yours. So that's where you've got the genetics from, okay? Shoes in general did not create bunions. A lot of women think that high heel shoes caused their bunion, when in fact you would have developed that bunion regardless if you ever wore a shoe one day in your life. It just so happens that it's not the um, size of the bunion that creates a discomfort. It happens to be the shape, the way the bone grows out, cutting into the soft tissue internally, creating that inflammation and that pain. So that's where the pain comes from, okay? Now when it comes to work or working out, you just have to realize how much time you're allowed to stand and walk on your foot and apply that to your job. And when it comes to exercise, you know, that first four weeks, I definitely don't want you putting tremendous pressure on the ball of your foot, bending that heel up, and driving your body weight forward off of that great toe joint. So as long as you can figure out what you can do other than that, you're welcome to do it. Okay? All right. At this point in time, are there any questions that I may ask, uh, answer? Not one? Come on, somebody's got to ask, ask a question. <laughs> um, well, at this point then, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll break it down. We have uh, individual uh, exam rooms here, and I'll talk to you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Okay, so we're going to start that process right now. After the group presentation, Dr. Moy takes each patient into an individual room and meets with us. And here you're seeing him getting ready to explain the process, the pre-op, go through the consultation of my foot to see if I'm a good candidate for the surgery. Anxious, a nervous. Bit nervous. <laughs> Although I ran into a couple of your patients out front. You did? Yeah. What did they have to say? Hopefully good things. Yes, very good things. Actually, today's Monday. Uh -huh. They had theirs on Thursday. Right. And I asked one of them how their weekend went. Uh -huh. And she said that she went to a wedding. Oh. I hope she didn't dance too much. Okay. She said she didn't. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tilt you up here a little higher. Well, first thing I'm going to do is take a look at your foot here, okay? Yep. And let's see, which foot are you interested in doing? We're starting with the left. The left foot. Yeah. Okay. Let me take Fair your left shoe off for me. All right. Well, in terms of the discomfort where you're having, is it primarily here? Mm -hmm. And where else would you say you're having it? That's pretty much it. And I would say so, probably on this bottom part is where I feel. Right there. The okay. The and the ball of your foot feels pretty good all the way across here. Yes. Great. Nothing going on over here? No. Okay. You've got good range of motion. That's great. You've got nice um, skin elasticity, which will help you with the range of motion postoperatively. So everything looks really good in terms of what I, I see here. Okay. So, Kimber, right now I'm going to go over your x-rays with you, and what you're looking at here is, as you saw just a little while ago, the amount of bone sticking off to the right of that red line is the bunion itself, and you can see your sesamoids are moderately displaced to this side over here, and you don't really have a great deviation of the great toe as you see on some of the more severe examples 
of bunions. Okay, so what you have, I consider, is a um, mild to moderate bunion deformity, which are actually a lot easier to correct than a real severe one. Okay, okay? all right. So it's a very, very typical. All right. Great. That's it. Okay, Kim, I'm going to ask you a couple questions about your past medical history. Um, are you taking any medications or allergic to any medications? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, are you currently being treated by any doctor for any medical condition right now? Mm -mm. No. Oh, good. Okay. Let's take a look at a couple of things here. Very good. Okay. Well, first off, um, regarding your surgery, I'm going to write your prescription for a couple of medications. Are you allergic uh, to any medications like uh, Advil, Motrin, Ibuprofen, no. or any history of any stomach ulcers with those medications? No, pretty lucky there. Good. All right. First medication I'm going to give you is called Tordol. It's mm -hmm. an anti-inflammatory medication that I want to take twice a day after surgery with food. Okay. Okay. Um, and you're going to have enough there for about five days, and then you'll be done with that. So please don't take anything like Advil, Motrin, or Ibuprofen with that, because it would be like doubling up on the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, in the event that something were to happen, like you were to stumble on your foot, drop something on it, a dog runs across it, drop something out of the freezer on it, all right, there's a couple pills of Vicodin to take only if you feel it's absolutely necessary. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Chances are you won't need to take that. Now, <clears throat> after surgery, you're going to go home and you're going to go to bed eventually that evening. There'll be this material wrapped around your foot. This material is actually rather tight, and it'll be wrapped just like this, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you go to bed that night, you're going to take a pair of scissors, and you're going to cut from this point here straight down to right there, and I'm going to draw a purple line there the day of surgery to allow that bandage to open up to increase the circulation to your foot while you're sleeping, okay? Because okay? if you don't, that will create or can create a tremendous amount of discomfort, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So please get your prescription filled before the surgery, not afterwards. Okay. All right. Now also I have here a brochure of the facility. And this brochure says things of what to do and what, what not to do before and after surgery. Okay. And when you check in that day, you're going to check in this particular door right here, not the one that you came in today. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. All right. Your surgery is scheduled for 12.30, and we want you to arrive by 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please read this brochure and make sure you familiarize yourself with that. Also in this uh, package are some instructions regarding weeks 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And they're broken down week by week as well. Okay, and you can see that. Please uh, familiarize yourself with that as well. Okay, now there's really only a few things that I really need to emphasize regarding the surgery that are already in here, okay? Number one, it's extremely important that you do not eat anything eight hours prior to your surgery start time. Okay. Okay. Please do not drink anything at least two hours prior to your surgery start time, and make sure you show up an hour before your surgery starts. Okay. Okay, those are really important. Afterwards, don't remove the dressings, don't get your foot wet, and try not to walk more than 10 or 15 minutes per hour walking primarily on your heel and off the side of your foot. Again, when you come back in the office a few days after surgery, that's when you get the gray boot and you can start walking more like 20 to 30 minutes per hour if you choose to. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to go over your consent. Your consent reads, Kimber, that we're going to do your bunion correction on your left foot. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Right. Okay. Actually, it's the left, so it's this one, correct? Right. Now, in my sitting down with Dr. Moy, he did make me feel rather comfortable about my procedure coming up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alternative methods of treatment that you've tried to help alleviate your discomfort would be things like you've tried wearing uh, wider shoes, maybe limit some of your activity on your feet. Um, have you ever had orthotics or any paddings or anything like that that you can recall for your feet? I did when I was younger. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've also seen other surgeons um, regarding your foot condition? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Now, there are possible complications involved with surgery, but the nice thing is that they're extremely rare. Okay. okay. Such as infection, pain, swelling, reaction to the anesthesia, or medications that are given to you before or after surgery. Refusal to wear the proper appliance, which is that shoe and that boot, can negate the surgery. Your toe may appear longer, shorter, operative area could have stiffness, reoccurrence of bone growth, 
limitation of joint movement, it is possible for the big toe to move away from the second toe or still be positioned towards the second toe. You could have some delayed healing after post-operative trauma, which means if you injure the area. The internal fixation, which is a screw, may need to be removed at a later date because you might have soreness at that site. Reaction to absorbable suture material. There may be a malalignment of the osteotomy site. Now that means the bone can shift or move, but I have not seen that happen in over nine years since we've been using this gray boot. So as long as you're compliant with that, you're pretty much safe with that. So numbness could persist over the operative site and residual arthritis, swelling, and tenderness could remain in the joint. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're doing your surgery next door. And I'm going to give you that boot there. And it's just uh, letting you acknowledge that uh, we're doing your surgery at the surgery center and giving you that boot, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'd like you to do is sign the consent here. There's he went through the diagnosis of my foot, let me know that I was a good candidate, and not to worry, really. Well, why are you doing that? Do you have any final questions or any concerns for me at all that you can think of? Um, in re relation to the pen, mm -hmm. you put a pen in, Right. And it comes out or it stays in? Um, that will be determined based upon what you feel some two or three months after surgery. Mm -hmm. If you feel like it's bothering you, then I'd recommend you take it out. If it doesn't, then I recommend you leave it in. Mm -hmm. So you have patients, okay. do most of them just leave it in? I would say half elect to take it out and half elect to leave it in. It all based on, on what they feel with their activity and a certain style of the shoes that they like to wear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's putting a lot of pressure on that spot, and if it is making it sore, tender, then just simply take it out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I think that's my primary question. Okay. I was wondering about that pen. I'd heard a lot about it. Here's your prescription. Again, get it filled before the surgery, not afterwards, and all that information you have there, okay? And then when you go up front right now... You... What Dr. Moy does is he really makes you feel at ease. His professionalism shows, and you know that he knows what he's doing. Okay, okay great. All right. Okay. We'll see you, you at ready? the day of surgery. Okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome.